Yo. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sports Prodigies. This is going to be our sixth episode. And today, you are back with your hosts. I'm Aiden. And I'm Swoggle. And today, we will be having a very special guest on the show, Aaron Rubin. Thank you. Uh, I'm very excited to appear on the show, finally. And uh, excited to uh, discuss what happened in the draft. Yeah, it's oh, yes. Before, you, obviously, you got to it. So today, we'll be talking about our three best draft classes and three worst uh, worst draft classes of this 2020 NFL draft. And then we'll be getting to our uh, a couple steals throughout the draft. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to get a steal from the first round, a steal from the second round, a steal from the third round, and then we are going to be picking a steal from rounds four through seven. So, Aaron, uh, welcome. Um, you're going to start us off. Can you give us our three worst draft classes and why? Not, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll each say number three, then we go down to number two. Okay, yeah, that's a perfect idea. Yeah, that's so, fine. Aaron, you can start. Number All three. Right, so, uh, your, wor- your number three worst draft class. I'm going to go with the, the Patriots. Well, they didn't pick a QB, and that was a major need. They passed on Jalen Hurts, Jacob Eason, and Jake Fromm. All together, that was a major need. Now, Jared Stidham is projected their starting quarterback. And who knows what's to come. They took a kicker over a QB. And with their first pick, they also took a D, a Division II player. And you never know. They, those guys don't have good competition where they, where they play. You never know how those guys pan out. So, uh, Patriots, my number three. Aaron, I got a question for you, uh, Swaggle, before you go. Do you think that the Patriots will be looking in the market to sign a guy? Like, I definitely heard Winston was signed, but do you think they would go and get a guy like Cam Newton before the season? I could definitely see that happening. I mean, Cam Newton is clearly NFL talent. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, considering all they have is Stidham and Hoyer right now. So, yeah. Okay, Swag, we'll get to your number three. Yeah, my number three were well. Before I get to my number three, I actually have to disagree with you on the Patriots. I think Kyle Duggar is going to be a very good football player. All right, but anyways, my number three worst draft class is the Philadelphia Eagles. In the first round, I thought they reached a little bit on Jalen Rieger when better receivers such as Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins were still on the board. I thought Jalen Rieger was more of a second round pick. So I think that was a little bit of a reach. And then the Jalen Hurts pick in the second round, I just don't get really whatsoever. They have Carson Wentz. I think they think he's their franchise quarterback. I don't know what they're bringing in Jalen Hurts to do exactly. And then the rest of their draft, it just wasn't anything stood out. They they needed receivers. They got a bunch of receivers, which was good. But I think they reached in all the most of their picks for more needs than actually best player. See, uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. I, I love the Jalen Hurts pick. I absolutely love it. So what do you think they're doing? Why would they do that if they've paid Carson Wentz all of this money? And I understand he gets injured, but they've clearly shown that that's their guy. So why would you draft that guy with the second-round pick? Well, he could fill a Taysom Roll type, act, uh, type role. They could, it's, it's that on steroids. You could always run two guys in there and – He's a playmaker. You see this guy in college. He rushed for, what, over 15 touchdowns last season. Second in the Heisman. I just think he's talent, and they could use him. And Wentz is injury-prone every single year. Guy can't play a playoff game. Hurts. I'm telling you, he's a steal. Okay. Um, I guess we're going to see. I don't really know what their plan is, but it's it's going to show this season if it was a good or bad pick. So I'm going to get to my uh, third worst. My third worst was the uh, the new Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I didn't like their first-round pick. I thought they took Ruggs, who on my board was the number three wide receiver. I definitely have C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy above Ruggs. So I understand John Gruden loves his speedy guys. I understand that. But I feel like if you're trying to get a receiver in the first round, why don't you go for the best? And then I didn't like their – uh, I think they're a second, another round, uh, another first round pick, Damon Arnett. I didn't like that pick either, and I didn't really think their draft panned out. So that's why I have them at three. I don't really like what they did. Um, I actually like what they did here. 
to be honest with you. But do you think. agree with me, Swoggle, that, like, if you're going for a receiver, don't go for the best receiver? Like, where did you have Ruggs on your board? I, I had Ruggs as my number three like you. I think I should, think it was a reach. I don't think they should have taken him. But as far as the number three worst draft class, I disagree. I kind of like what they did here. They got three very solid, fast, speedy receivers. Lane Bowden is one of the most versatile players in the draft. He, yep. He, he was a receiver, and they, they're – I think both their QBs got hurt, and this guy ended up playing quarterback for them in a Wildcats-style offense. And then the Amik Robertson pick was was a major steal, I think. He, he was – I had him as a third rounder. I think they got him in the late fourth round. So, I, I, I like I like the draft a little bit. Not I mean, I don't love it. I just don't think it's a top three worst draft. Okay. Um. So, Swaggo, you want to get to your second worst? Yeah, my second worst is actually the Seattle Seahawks. They had the 27th pick, and they selected Jordan Brooks with the number one inside linebacker on my board if we're considering Isaiah Simmons as more of like a utility player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. Patrick Queen was still on board, and they selected Jordan Brooks, who I had as a mid, mid-second round, late-second round player. I think that was a major reach. I think their second-round pick, the Rel Taylor, was a reach. I, 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 think, that, I think the Seahawks keep – in past drafts, past couple of years, in this year, they just keep reaching on guys based on need, but not even. Just, they just keep reaching on weird positions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you on that a lot. Um, my second like, worst, like, like, there's just no one on this in this draft that sticks out to me. Yeah, I agree with you. But my second worst, like you said earlier, is the Eagles. I didn't like what they did. All the things you said, I agree with. So I don't really need to say much if people are listening. So that's that's my second worst. I, I personally didn't like the Jalen Hurts, so I agree with you on that. Um, I do wonder what they're gonna do. I don't think they. I don't know if they're gonna pull off that Taysom Hill thing. Like I don't really like that. But like, let's see if the Eagles do it. Like I have no clue. So Aaron, what's your second worst? Well, I'm gonna have to go with the Chicago Bears. See, in the draft, you take players that you need to fill positions. The Panther, uh, not the Panthers, the the Bears. They pick Cole Komet. What's the need for that? They just signed Jimmy Graham. They have all these, they have all these tight ends already, and there's just no need for that. Now Matt Nagy is a great coach, so we'll see how he'll fit them all in. But it was just a luxury pick, and I don't know what was the need for that. That's that just destroyed their draft class. And okay, I think- so I think Swoggle, did you have to say something or no? Did I cut you off? I don't know if you didn't cut me off, but I'll say something. I okay. Think, yeah. Go. I think. I think the Bears need need a, a a good tight end, and let's be honest, Jimmy Graham's not really any good anymore. They overpaid for him. That was their mistake. So I don't hate the pick. Jalen Johnson was a steal in the second round, I believe. He, so I don't hate it. There's just no need to add to strengths. But it's not a strength. Jimmy Graham's not a strength to me. I think Jimmy Graham's a great player. Had a great career. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he, he, I also, definitely he, also, he was. He also did catch a very big pass in the NFC champ uh I mean the NFC divisional round to uh propel them over the Seahawks. What did he catch? So it's one pass. Well it's it's more than that. It's just the big plays he makes throughout his career, and I think he still has a few good years left in him. I think his. I don't think he has any years left. But okay, let's move on. So I think we all have this one draft class yeah. as the worst. Uh, the Packers. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So do you guys want to talk about that, or do you yeah. want me to start? I'll, or... I'll, I'll talk about it real quick. I, mm-hmm. I don't know what they were doing to. trading up for Jordan Love. They have Aaron Rodgers under contract for three more years. I think he wants to play. For whoever knows, I think he wants to have a career like Tom Brady. Even the the guy shows no signs of slowing down. They traded up to get him when I they could have gotten him at thirty one. I, I don't get what they were doing. Then they go ahead in the second round. They need receivers for Aaron Rodgers, and they reach on a running back, AJ Dillon. He was mm-hmm. he's a fourth round player. They already have Aaron Jones, and then to make matters worse, in the third round they take the tight end out of Cincinnati. And that was just another reach. I, I just the whole the whole draft. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah, very bad draft, and I think we all agree on that. So, uh, yeah, what do you want to add, say? 
to add to the Packers' horrible uh, draft class, they're possibly going to have no starters coming from this class. It's, it's just a waste. They're in win-now mode, and they did nothing to help them win now. Yep. No starters. Okay, so let's move on. So now we're going to do our three best draft class. Uh, so, Swoggle, you want to start? Yeah, so we're going to go down to number three to number one, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to do our third best, second best, first best. All right, yeah, my third best is the Miami Dolphins. They had the most picks in this draft class. They took two with their franchise quarterback with their first pick. They had three first-rounders, so let me start with that. They took two with their first pick at five. Then they take his protection, Austin Jackson, who I think is a little bit raw, but very athletic and definitely will develop with Tua, and I think he can turn into something very good. Then with their third first-round pick, they selected the cornerback, Noah Igbogini. I thought that they didn't really need him, but they have so many picks, so that he was probably their top guy on their board. So why not? And then their first, second-round pick, they took Robert Hunt, who I think – He's from a small school, Louisiana Lafayette, so small school player, but he can play tackle or guard. I think he can be very, very good. Their, their draft, Raquan Davis was a great pick. Curtis Weaver in the fifth round was a steal. I, I just really like the draft class. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. Um, They weren't in my top three, but I definitely thought they did have a good draft class. My number three is the Cincinnati Bengals. I thought they had a very good draft class. Obviously, at the first overall pick, they took Joe Burrow. And then in the second round, they got T. Higgins out of Clemson, which I loved. Um, I think T. Higgins and A.J. Green are definitely going to be two very good wide receivers and really help out Joe Burrow. I feel like they did a lot of good things in the draft. And I feel like, obviously, they're not going to like go from being the worst team in the NFL to like one of the best. But I think it's like a good draft to like improve on, and like it will really help the team going into this season. So that's why I had them at my three. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, I agree with your guys' uh, good draft classes, but I'm just gonna go in a different direction. I'm gonna say the Arizona Cardinals. I thought they had a great draft. Well, let's start obviously with their first pick, Isaiah Simmons, and. They say that when he's on the football field, he counts as like three men. He's all over, can play any position, speedy guy, gets the ball real fast, can't go wrong with that pick. He could have been a top five easily, so he went to eight. It's it's fine. He fits their defense. And uh, next they pick, in the third round, they pick Josh Jones, who's an offensive lineman from Houston. But uh, they're so happy he fell down to them. People call him a gift from the football gods and add protection to Kyler Murray. They have Hopkins and they have weapons can compete with the Seahawks and the Niners and hopefully get in that seventh spot if they can this year. Okay. Um, so I'm, I like that. Uh, I'm going to start. I thought Isaiah Simmons, by the way, was a great pick. Um, mm-hmm. It was one of my uh, top three picks. Um my second best draft were was Swaggle's team, the Baltimore Ravens. I thought they had a very good draft. Like you said earlier, they lucked out and got Patrick Queen. Uh, they also got J.K. Dobbins. They um, they got a guard to replace the uh, retired Marshall Yonda. I feel like all of their picks will definitely help them a lot, and I feel like the Ravens are going to be a hard team to beat this year. So that's why I had them at number two. Yeah, I'm going to get. Do you want to add anything on that? Swaggle, because I know. No, I'm good. actually going to add in to that when I later on. Okay, cool. So, do you want to give your number two? Yeah, my number two is the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, going into the draft, Justin Jefferson was my favorite receiver in the draft class. Not saying he was my top rank; he was just my favorite receiver, like my favorite player. And he he got they got to him at number twenty two, which was a great pick in my opinion. Then they had the twenty fifth pick, and they trade back. And they select Jeff Gladney, who, in my opinion, could be one of the could be the third cornerback in this draft class. Great pick to get some more draft capital. Third, their next pick, Ezra Cleveland. I thought I don't know how good he's going to be. I thought that was kind of a reach. But then they get Cameron Dantzler in the in the third round. I mean, he he's one of my favorite players in this draft. I think he'd be a really big steal. He, he's a little bit slow, but he's long, lanky, great press cover. And then they get James Lynch in the fourth round. This guy had 13 and a half sacks last year for Baylor and led the, led the team in sacks. 
So to get that type of production there, I, I really like this draft class and just looks really good. Okay, Ruben, you want to go? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm going to go with the Panthers. So they made history in this draft picking all defense. And uh, they have new head coach Matt Rule, who has turned Baylor around in the college football world. So now he's in the NFL. Let's see what he could do for them. Well, Derek Brown from Auburn, obviously big guy, beast <laughs> up in the trenches. I mean, that was that was beautiful. Uh, next, they went with Yeter Gross Matos from Penn State, who, well, being a Michigan fan, I was able to see Gross Matos play against them. This guy was all over the field made plays and he's a ball player and they didn't really reach for anyone and they also got a speedy corner in troy pride so they could have don't forget don't done... forget jeremy chin mm-hmm. well they could have done offensive line but i mean they had horrible defense last year the falcons there? who which i'm a fan of they played them twice a year tore them up scored like 40 points each time so Definitely good to uh, upgrade your defense. Let's go. I think they needed to upgrade defense because what I've been seeing from those other teams in the division, the Saints are already insane. The Buccaneers just got all these guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Falcons are pretty good, but they're probably going to finish last. So I feel like they just Uh, need defense to really help them out. I feel like Carolina could definitely get like – I just think that – I don't know if they'll finish last, but – That division will be – very good this year. We could see three teams from uh, that division get in the playoffs. Okay, so Aaron, you want to give your number one? Yeah. Uh, so for the number one, I'm going to give the Denver Broncos. I mean, the Chiefs are in their division, and you're not stopping their them on defense. So what do you got to do? You got to stay pace with them on offense. So now you got Drew Locke, who's a young quarterback. You got to surround him with talent. So what do you do? You pick Judy, Hamler, both speedy guys, tear it up for them, and we'll see what they could do up there. Well, now they also have uh, Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay, who are great running backs. So I just think they're adding to their offense, doing great. They got a center in Lloyd Cushenberry from LSU, who's a great pick. And I just think they, hopefully their offense can get it together, which it certainly will and compete with the Chiefs. I really like their draft class, but something with Denver that I've been saying for a while, if Drew Locke does not perform, their team is screwed. He, he, will, he is the main piece in that. I yes. understand you have Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay behind them, two workhorses, but you got to feed these guys like Judy and Hamler, like you're saying. I feel like Drew Locke is kind of the key piece to that. And if he performs, I think this team's going to do very well. But and, team... and to add, they also have uh, Noah Fant and Cortland Sutton, so their offense should be booming yeah, this year. Yeah, their offense is going to be insane this year, but it all yep. depends on Drew Locke, obviously. Yeah. So what's it called? My number one is the Dallas Cowboys. That is just false. <laughs> it's not. I'm going to tell you, Swoggle. You want to hear it? My team, the Dallas Cowboys. The, First the round, Cowgirls. go out. Get the best receiver in the draft. Jerry Judy Lamb. Is the best I believe receiver. it. Not Jerry Judy. I think C.D. Lamb. Why? Because he's a cowboy. Okay. This wide receiver class is deep. Okay. So. C.D. Lamb, I think – okay. Here, I'm going to put it to you like this. A wide receiver does not get paired to DeAndre Hopkins coming into the league if they're not a beast. Again, you're listening – Lamb's again, a beast. Again, you're listening to other I'm people. I'm not. Who, you, oh, you. I'm not. This is mine. This is mine. This is what I compared it to. Okay. Okay. Let there. me go on. Second round, we go out. We get Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama. Not a fan. You're not a fan of that not pick. A fan of, I'm not a fan of Trayvon Diggs. I don't. Why? I just don't. I think he's a little bit overrated. I I think he's very good. But let's move on. You ready? No, Before he was no. A cowboy, is... didn't even know who he was. Oh my god. That's that's crap. Who, who did? That's terrible. Your next pick, I like Neville Gallimore. Yes, I like that pick because we have two veteran defensive tackles, and with Nelvin Gilmore going in there, it, it's going to be like the future. It's Gallimore, not Gal- Gilmore, or whatever the hell I said Gallimore. Okay. Okay. All right, and just to throw it in as an honorable mention, I always got to give credit to my Falcons. Bolstered the defense, got a nice center to go behind Alex Mack, can move him around. Falcons maybe had the just worst. Just going to throw them in. Maybe had the worst first-round pick. But let me finish. I feel like you guys are really cutting me off. All right. I just okay, go ahead. Okay. I feel like it was a very good pick. We traded up in the fourth round to get 
Uh, Tyler, how do you say that? Tyler Bidia Dad no, out of Wisconsin, the center. Tyler Bidia. Yes. Yeah, he's good. Okay. I love that pick personally. I think uh, it, because Travis Frederick just retired, why not just get another center out of Wisconsin? I think he's going to be very good for the Cowboys. I don't think he's going to start this year because we still do have Joe Looney. But like I said, the future. This guy's going to be the future. And lastly, I love the pick Bradley uh, Anai out of Utah, the All-American this year. He's really going to help out. And I think that the Cowboys had the best pick. I feel right, like well, they had a, a lot of very right. good picks. I, I guess it's my turn for my number one, all right? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to go with not being a hometown guy here, but I'm going to have to go with the Baltimore Ravens. Not only is this the best draft class in this draft, this could be one of the best draft classes I've ever seen. They, they, The Ravens did it again. That's all I'm going to say. They, they wait back at 28, get a top 20 player, the top inside linebacker, Patrick Queen. Then, then okay. in the second round, they have 55 overall and number 60 overall. At 55, they take J.K. Dobbins. At first, is I J.K. Dobbins a need? At first, at first, no, I I'm just asking, Swaggle, because you definitely you did cut me off about C.D. Lamb. Is J.K. Dobbins a need? Is he a need? A need. You're no, talking about how players' teams should draft for need positions. No, I do not talk about That's that. That's what I, I think. think you should, I, that, no, 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 no. I think you should be going for top best player available, not need. That's mm, – I got to go with needs. Well, that's why the Ravens are one of the best at drafting because they go Well, that's why you available. said the Packers were the worst because they didn't draft needs. They drafted Jordan Love, quarterback, yes, not yes, a need. Yes, 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 yes. They need yes. Quarter, the Packers, wide receivers the Packers, didn't draft wide receivers. The, Packer, the Packers are a different story. They're They're contending. They needed a wide receiver – Opposite Devontae Adams. That was the Didn't only they need. Didn't they make it to the NFC about. Championship? That was the only need I'm talking about. J.K. Dobbins, on the other hand. You didn't answer it, by the way. But I'll let yes. you continue because we're yeah, running low on time. So, J.K. Dobbins, the running back at Ohio State. I started watching his highlights and I love the pick. I think he's going to be the best running back out of this draft class. This year, he's going to. I still think Mark Ingram's going to be the running back this year. He'll. I think. J.K. Dobbins will finish with like 450 to 500 rushing yards, like 25 catches. And then next year, this guy is going to explode. I'm telling you, this guy's insane. But then in the third round, we get defensive tackle Justin Matabike, who is an early second round talent. And we get him at 71 overall. Oh, wait, but I forgot to tell you that we had the 60th overall pick and we traded it for two third round picks. But we already had two of our own third round picks. So we had four third round picks and six picks in the first two days on top of we were the best team of regular season last year. Right, so, so then, so. then, then yes, after Matt BK, you get wide receiver Devin Duvernay. And I think this guy's one of the most underrated players in the draft. He ran a 4-3-9 at the combine. He had 106 catches for 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns last season. But did I tell you that he doesn't drop the football? He had no drops last season. Okay? Then you get then you get the compliment to Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison, who is more of a run thumper, big guy, and Patrick Queen's the more sideline to sideline. But Malik Harrison's supposed to be a second round pick. We get him at the end of the third round. Then you get two guys to compete to replace Marshall Yonda, Tyree Phillips, Ben Bredesen. Then you get James Prochet in the sixth round, who is one of the most sure handed receivers in the draft. Uh, uh, just a phenomenal draft. Yes, I I agree it was phenomenal, but the question remains: Can they make it far in the playoffs? Yeah, we'll find out, and I think they can. Right. Um, that's definitely a big thing with the Ravens. Um, I feel like Lamar is going to have another great season. We'll see about the playoffs. I'm not talking much. Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl in since I've been born. Like, it's been a while. Um, and I'm still waiting for a ring from the Falcons. Yeah, so okay. I think personally, they choke. I think the teams that we're saying had the best draft classes are all going to do very well this season. Um, yeah. Or, or yeah. Improve so at least. that is all for today. Aaron, thank you for coming on. Uh, please come on anytime. It's a pleasure. Um, everybody go like and subscribe. And if you are not following our new Instagram at sports prodigies, please go give that a follow. Thank you everybody for listening with your hosts. I'm Aiden. And I'm Swoggle. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.